So now we're going to just give a little summary. Uh, one second. I just hold on once I'm going to get the live on uh, Facebook. So we're in the fourth lesson and we are studying the Sefer called Ner Mitzvah Vatera Er, the candle of a commandment and Tera is light. So when we do a commandment, it's like a candle that's going to hold the light. But the actual light is the Torah study. And specifically, we are learning Shar Hayichud, which is the gate of oneness. And specifically, the mitzvah, the commandment that we're learning about is the how to fulfill the mitzvah of Shema Yisrael, Adinoi Eloheinu, Adinoi Echad, Hear, O Israel, the Lord is our God, the Lord is one, which means that we align everything in the world to the oneness of God. And we're going to use uh, Torah, the study of Torah, specifically surface learning and deep learning, which are two different types of learning, in order to fulfill this mitzvah. And last week we spoke about the three-legged stool. There's actually three parts. A stool with three legs stands when all the three legs are there. So the first thing is that there's a thing called, what we've spoken about before, um, called the big league. And the entry to the big league is uh, through action, by doing a good deed. Our ultimate goal is to um, have full control of our thoughts. And the way we get control of our thoughts is when you do something good, you're totally busy with that. Your thoughts, you can't think about anything else when you are really engaged in what you're doing. So the first action that it's very that we're encouraging everybody to take is do something good. Do something good that will engage your thoughts, and that's going to yeah. give you uh, put you in the direction of entering the big league. And the big league is when we have full control of our thoughts, where our thoughts are like a still a lake, and we are we. We're not, it's not like a roller coaster. We have full control and we have freedom of choice on what we think about. And it's very easy for us to choose what we think about. That is like the first level, that's the first base in the big league. And the other two, um, two the, now the other um, uh, leg of this stool is deep learning, which for that a person needs to become silent and repeat in their mind what they learned, and we spoke about that there's, there's nine levels, and we went into a lot of details, so it's important to review what we learned in the three previous classes to, 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 uh, to review the levels. But basically, if you want to know on one foot what needs to be done, is in surface learning, it's important to review verbally, to say over verbally what you learned, to say the text over, and eventually, when you say it over and over again, um, part of the text, a lot of the text will go to the long-term memory. And then it's going to be easier to analyze things in the conscious mind since you don't, you're not overloading the coach, conscious mind. When you're getting too much information at one time, you get overloaded. But when you repeat verbally over an important text, a text which holds a lot of information in very few words, like, the Chumash, the, the, the actual five books of Moses, like the Tanya, like Mishnayas, or like the Rambam, when you're familiar verbally with this type of text, it holds a lot of information, very few words, and when you get used to it, um, a, the, a, the, a lot of the complex information goes into the long-term memory, and therefore you're able to analyze it. You can clean your, uh, the, your, your conscious mind. You can clean the table and just put what's necessarily on that table so you don't feel that overwhelmed. You don't feel that, that, that overwhelming experience when somebody is giving too much new information. So that's, that's, the, um, that's surface learning. And then deep learning is uh, about comparing all the parts of the idea to each other. So you can now very easily just, to put, you can easily put two things of that concept onto your conscious mind, onto your table, and you compare them and you find what's the same, what's different between these two things. And that gives you that 
brings you to the point is just be quiet like when you when you're learning and in your mind repeat over what you just learned and then your mind naturally will start comparing and contrasting and differentiating so now we are going to start speaking about the third part of the brain so there's the right brain in which dwells uh insight chokhmah, wisdom dwells in the right brain brain it's insight it's usually comes like in a flash of an inspiration in the left brain bina bina dwells in the left brain it's more of a mathematical detailed thinking uh, brain um this is comprehension comprehension dwells in the left brain and then you have the back brain which is a person's ability to reason a person's ability to uh, to concentrate. A person's IQ is very much connected with their back brain and their emotional intelligence. You have the intellectual intelligence and you have the emotional intelligence and you have a person's personality. It's very much connected with this third brain, which is the back brain. And it has a, the, the brain, uh, in the uh, back of the head also has a connection, um, according to Kabbalah, to the forehead. And uh, according to the neurologist, they will say, well, it's the brain that's right behind the forehead, which is your conscious mind. And um, and this, this brain is also has to do with your wellness. How well, your person can be very intelligent and they can grasp ideas, but they not, may not be able to to balance themselves out, to balance their personality out. So a person's wellness is connected with this third brain. And this brain is called the brain of Das. The brain of Das is also about focus. It's about staying on task. It's about maintaining concentration. This is this very special brain. And we're gonna speak about this brain and how we use it. Now let's go to the to the words Vilifize Mashe Kerim Ha Oilam Hamakas Hadas. Vilfize, it's after the end of the brackets. Let's see. We have it. Lifize Mashe um probably on it's another net that's on the next page. One second, it's probably on the bottom of this page. All, all the way at the bottom. Last time, I think we only reached the bottom of the first page on, in this computer format. One second. Oh, uh, one second. No, no, I, it's, it's the word you see over here. Lefisa Masha Karima Ulam Hamakasadas. Okay. That's where we are. You want to underline it? Got it. Okay. Now, there's a confusion that people call meditation, people call the Chabad system of using the mind of comprehension in order to get to insight, people call that meditation. And he's going to explain that that's not... Um, that is, that is, we explained this also before, that that's, that's not meditation. Meditation is, is using the brain of focus. But the Fiza, so according to the above, according to this, Masha Karima Oilam Hamakas Adas, this that the world, that people call going deep with the Das, with the third brain, with the brain of focus, Ein Zegufa Shalamaka. This is actually what's not enabling you to go deep. What's enabling you to go deep is your brain, your left brain, the brain of comprehension. Your brain of comprehension is allowing you to go deep to because it allows you to get to the deep uh, comprehend con, um, the the deep point which you can comprehend, which is the core concept, the bina of the brain of comprehension. This de deep 
core concept has no, it's not connected with the, your brain of focus. Ah, however, when do we need the brain of focus? How do we use the brain of uh, focus? Achadas hu bechinas iskashus hargashose bemusag beyeser. The das is once you got to the core concept, then you connect your feelings to the core concept very much. So this allows you to go deeper in the core concept, in the comprehend, uh, in the point which is comprehensible. After you did Ion, after you did deep study, canal. In other words, there's no point in doing meditation till you've reached the core concept. And the way you reach the core concept is by doing comprehension through the through the three parts of the river. So explaining it to people, basically a process of study. Once you've done a pro process of study, then you have a concept on which to apply your uh, brain of attention. And that is going to allow you to, that's going to upgrade you to a new level. In other words, when you connect all your feelings to that core concept, that's going to upgrade, that's going to bring you an upgrade to a point which you weren't able to reach before. So now, Ion, we said, is the same as his Bainunus, which means deep study, looking deeply on, on something. It's a kli, means it's a tool. It's a tool, it's a vessel to get to a makasaga. In other words, there's no, there's essentially, there's no value in the, in the process of deep study um, if you're not going to get to the core concept. So the whole point of doing deep study and repeating things in your mind and comparing things and using the brain of, of comprehension is to get to this, to the, to the core concept. But then once you get to the core concept, uh, the, the focus brain is like the, uh, there's, different, there's different metaphors. We can give metaphors that kids can understand. It's like your magnifying glass. Your brain of dust is like your magnifying glass. You basically, you, you put everything which you don't want out of your attention, uh, out of your attention, and you just focus on this one thing. And that becomes your big picture. Um, and it, after it, 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 then it becomes like a tunnel. So first, it's like a magnifying glass, but then it becomes like a tunnel to bring you to, to a new place. And then it not only becomes a tunnel, it becomes a factory to, to totally, you come up with something which is totally in a different realm from what you had before. So, the gamba das yesh erech verech veaymek. And just like we have the three parts of a river in the mind of comprehension, in other words, Eirach is the ability to deliver, to articulate. That's the length of the river, because when you, you travel down the river, right? With, you travel down river, in other words, you bring um, provisions or supplies from one place of the river, from one village to another village. It's the idea of delivery. It's the idea of uh, articulation. Bring an idea down. That's the length of the river. The width of a river is the going in all the details, explaining something with all the details. That's what you do to the people that are professionally trying to study the subject, that they you should be able to use the subject. Just because you articulate an idea, it doesn't mean uh, anybody can actually use it yet. So when we go into all the details and all the different scenarios and situations, people start to understand what the core concept is, and then that becomes transferable to the point where people actually use it. So in the length of the river, we have the core concept, the way you can articulate it to another person, whereas in the width, you have the core concept that it's actually potentially uh, usable. And that gets you to the depth, and the depth is the core concept. So, and then we explain that, that in the right brain, that the, the brain of um, insight, it's possible to do that, as well, but most people aren't able to get there by themselves. And then we spoke about how a Rebbe, a Rebbe is somebody who goes into the wellsprings and he can hold onto your hand and, and give you the experience of the wellspring, even though you can't get there 
all by yourself. It can save you a lot of time. And and the same way, Bedas and the brain of focus, which is the bre uh, 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 brain in the back of the brain, which is corresponding to the forehead right behind, uh, right in the front of your uh, person's face, yeah? Yesh erech verechev There are, is the length, there is the width, and there is a depth. There is a person that we say has a very short das. And a very short das is that they don't have a long attention span. And if a person, you people have like uh, what they call it, they, 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 uh, they call it attention disorder. But, but those same people, when they go do a uh, subject which is enjoyable to them, they can, they can think about it all day long. So the secret of somebody who doesn't have a long attention span is to figure out how to make that subject enjoyable. The same thing when a person is praying. Sometimes when they're praying from the Siddur, the mind wanders. But if you, if you put effort and prepare before that you get engaged in the subject, then it, the mind won't wander. A person will be, won't have such a short attention span. So, that, so the, the first type of Das is the short attention span. The yesh daito arucha. And then there is a the long attention span. A person can, can focus on the subject for a long time. They get really engaged. The whole, the whole, the whole industry of, of media, the whole I industry of advertising is all about getting people's attention. The first thing you need to do is get people's attention. That's what's highly valuable now. The more people you get, you get, you get to give you attention, then you can give them something of value. So you want to catch people's attention, but then you want to keep people's attention. That's arucha, keeping attention. Keep yourself, keep your attention. Uh, people, people listen to a lecture and they find their mind is wandering. They have this das katsara. So what do you do? We need to, to tell them to write, to write it down. So by doing something physical, writing down what's being said, they're able to, to maintain their attention from, uh, uh, for, for much a longer uh, time. So there's tricks. There are skills in, for, for maintaining a person's, for working with the person's das that can be improved. There is a person who has a wide das. Now, what a wide das is, is something really interesting. Yeah, have you ever argued with a person and they get like angry, right? That, that's not a person that has, has a das rachava. A das rachava is somebody has a very wide das and can handle two positions inside their attention. In other words, they remember what they themselves, their own opinion in the subject, and they can understand a different person's opinion. They can disagree with that other person and be okay with it. They have enough space in their mental attention. It's wide. There's enough space. I can, I can understand you, and I can disagree with you, and I can also remember what I, my opinion in this situation, and everything's good. So that is a person who has a das rachava, a very wide attention span. They don't get angry when somebody disagrees with them. They're okay. Vulai arucha. However, they may not have a long attention span. In other words, like a businessman can understand another person's opinion, be okay with it, but he doesn't have time. He doesn't have time. He has to go to the next thing that's worth, that's, that, that, that gives value. So he doesn't have a long, as Rahava, a wide attention span, but he's going to give, only give you, only give you two minutes, and maybe 30 seconds. But that's Chazak, so, but, but a good listener, I mean, a good listener, a therapist, right, is a good, good uh, that they would need a Das Arucha. They would need to have a long attention span, be able to listen to a person for a long time. And it would obviously be useful to them to have a wide das as well, that they can handle a different way of thinking. The das chazak, then there's the strong das. The strong das, I saw in Lukutei Torah, that in the generation of Moshe Rabbeinu, of Moses, a teacher, the only people that had a das 
Hazak is Moses and his brother Aaron were the only people in his generation that uh, had a strong dust. That means they're not susceptible to cognitive distortion. Most people in the world are susceptible to cognitive distortion. They can be tricked. Even if they're highly intelligent, they have tremendous comprehension, they have insight, they're able to have it, they able to, to pay attention for a long time, they're able to handle other people's opinions, but they still can be tricked. Everybody is susceptible. The only person in, in his generation, well, the only people in his generation, all the wonderful, tremendous people that studied Torah and heard Torah directly from God, the only people that had a strong das was Moshe. And in every generation, we have the leader of the generation. He has a, has a das chazak, a strong das. Just on a side point, I was wondering, we, we just learned in the last parsha about Kisisa, how they made a golden calf, and only a very small amount of people actually served the golden calf. And they, um, they, they didn't last for very long. I mean, it's a, it's a, it's a capital crime, and even if they didn't have, um, they didn't have any, any witnesses, they still uh, passed away very quickly because they, 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 they should have known better. And then Moses goes up the mountain for 40 days to pray for everybody. But these people are gone. The people that actually serve the golden calf are gone. So what was the problem? The problem is they didn't confront the, um, they didn't confront the servers. There was one person that confronted everybody and he was killed. But there was there's so many people over here. They could have protected. They could have got up. They could have been uh, have mental clarity and could have said, "No, we're not standing up for this." But they didn't because they got they allowed themselves to be confused. So even so so even if so so even if um, they they. Uh, even if they didn't actually serve the golden, the golden calf, their problem was the toleration of the golden calf. That they that it was a it was a it was a das thing, because they did not have clarity to stand up for what is right. That shows on a certain weakness that they had. They should have had more of it, more of a das chazak, and that's why Moses needed to pray for them for forty days. Then let's go to the next one. Oidas Kal Kanashim. Now, uh, 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 we want to strengthen our, we have to remember one of the ways to maintain Adas Chazak is to remember that we don't have Adas Chazak. And we need to be firm in our, in our decision. And remember that we're susceptible. Don't think that you're not, that I am not susceptible for co from cognitive distortion. And that allows me to pray that God keep me focused on what I should be focused and I should be strong with the thing that I'm that, I'm, that I should be strong because I, I can't rely that I won't be tricked. Then there's a das kalkanashin, a light das like women. Shaddai tan kalis, their, their das is, is light. Now let's explain this because this is very important to understand. If I have a das arucha, a long attention span, and let's say I have a deepest attention span, and I have a kid crying, I will not be able to have the necessarily this the, the space to refocus on this child and realize, oh, he needs a diaper change. If I don't change it now, they're going to get a diaper rash, and they're going to start bleeding, and it's going to be very painful to them, and I just have to do this now. Oh, they're thirsty, and I need to give them water now. And maybe there are more children, and I need to be able to refocus very quickly, rapidly, onto um, onto each person, each child, and to figure out what they need and give them what they need. So you need a magnifying glass that's light, that's not heavy, that's easy to move from one thing to another. 
and that's the Das Kal, and we all we all have Das Kal. Have you ever gone onto your uh, cell phone to to do a certain task, and something comes up, and somebody asks you a question, and and then you forgot why you came, and you complete that task, and you don't even remember why you came onto the cell phone and what task you wanted to do. Well, that's Das Kal. That's absolutely Das Kal. That you have a light, light das. You just move from one thing to another. You don't remember even where it was supposed to be. So everybody has das kal to a certain, a certain um, extent. But the women, das kal is very useful because it's able, it's very light uh, magnifying glass that can move from child to child. Because if you don't take care of their needs rapidly, if you don't, take care of their needs rapidly, you know, they're going to die. So you have to have a das cow. The, the, but there's a, that's the upside. It's very important. There's another upside I'll speak in about in a second, but let's say, let's, let's, let's speak about the downside. The downside of the das cow is, is that we forget um, that it's possible to forget who we're supposed to be attracted to. And you're able to 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 destabilize uh, destabilize the the marital and a family situation um, easily by having this this um, magnifying glass that could be moved easily and and you can look at a a different person you can look at a different person and um, because they're able to and and see value in this person see how they are a uh, a, 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 a real man, and they could feel attraction to that person and forget that really this is uh, destabilizing and this uh, and and forget about the repercussions, the long term repercussions of of having a das cow. And for that, for that, a number of um, protections need to be made. In fact, the same protections need to be made for for protections. Women need to make their own protection. They're not going to be. Um, um, Speaking for a long time to to somebody who's not their uh, husband, not to make a habit out of it, because there's a, there's an issue with das kal. Das kal is amazing, but das kal also may create problems. It has a downside, and but everybody has a das kal nowadays, so everybody needs um, everybody needs the uh, protection. There is um, there's another point to das kal is because um, a person who's 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 focused on one thing they may not be able to see the bigger picture, but a person who has a das kal and is able to look around it's like children. Children have an amazing das kal. They're able to look at a bigger picture and they can notice. A lot of things going around, going on at the same time because their 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 magnifying glass is very very light and it's just moving from one thing to another. So because of that, they're seeing the bigger picture and that gives them a connection to the essence of God in a way that the that the deep learner and the then the intellectual person doesn't have. So women have a direct connection to the essence of God because they're able to move their mental magnifying glass rapidly across, across the entire picture. And it just gives them this big picture, this big, big direct connection with Hashem. So there's upsides and downsides. So what happens is when the, uh, when the magnifying glass is light, it doesn't have a depth. It doesn't have a depth. And because it doesn't have a depth, we may not have a long attention span, and maybe we will only understand superficially. See, see, a mother with a das kal is trained to take care of the immediate needs of the child. But in order to um, take care of their deep, future needs, their deep emotional needs, uh, things that will give them success in the future, you need to have a little more focus on the child, like half an hour, like the, the Rebbe uh, says that 
you need half an hour to think about the education of children. Everybody needs to think about education of children for half an hour. Doesn't mean necessarily mean half an hour on each person. You move from person to person, but you need to give some individual attention in your mind is what is the best interest of this child? Go next. What is the best interest of this child? Next. What is the best interest of the class? What is the best interest? So that causes a person to have less of a das kal and more of a deep das, which is necessary for the for the long-term success of the children. So a das kal is very important for when you're dealing with babies, you need a very rapid das kal, superficial das. But for bigger kids, you need more of a long attention span in order to bring them uh, what they really need for their for their ultimate success, for their future success. So they should be able to make decisions in, uh, as independent adults in the future. So sometimes it's better not to take care of their all their simple needs. Let them let them take care of themselves to, to an extent. And and you have to be able to judge where where what's the next step which I can push push this ch a child to, or is it too ambitious? So it's it's it takes time, it takes a lot of uh, a lengthy dust that have a lot a deeper dust to be able to to get that. Now let's go further inside. This difference between a light dust and a deep dust, being godal cotton, is like the difference between an adult and a child. You do, and it's very known. Everybody can experience this. A child has a very light das. That means he doesn't really feel deeply a connection to the thing that they're, they're focusing on. It's not really connected to that, that, that object. Maybe to this thing that he understands or he writes it, but he wants. Only in a very superficial level he's connected okay that's why you're able to convince the child to want something else so i guess das kal a light um focus a light does comes in grades like the lowest grade is is a, a child i mean the lowest grade i mean the the lightest the lightest grade is a child and that's why because they're able to move their focus so quickly to something else you're able to convince them to want something else you're able, you're e much easier to convince them something else that has value. Mashen kein hangodal, which is not the case, an adult, shidaite amuka, isedavar, he has a deep das in what he wants. Shemavin, on the thing that he understands, or that he wants, who anikra amokas adas, this is called hamokas adas, a deep das. Shememela nimshach erach adas. Now, once a person has a deep das, they have, and it actually comes from enjoying that subject. They enjoy that subject. They have a deep das, and therefore they're going to be able to have erech das, a long das, a long focus, verach das, and they're also going to be able to handle somebody who doesn't hold like they do. They're going to be able to understand this problem from different angles, and they're not going to um, dismiss them Nowadays, you have this idea of dismissive, dismissive, they call it dismissive culture, or they, they call some, they, they give a, a labeling, they label somebody a theorist, and then they dismiss it, you don't even um, have space, cancel culture, that's what it is. You don't even have space for another opinion. You can disagree with the other opinion, but at least put it on the table that you can analyze it. So that's lack. So Rechavadas, if a person has, um, uh, a lengthy, uh, deep dust, then obviously they're going to be able to pay attention. They're going to be able to handle a different way of view. They're going to be able to explain the different view, and they're not going to get uh, they're not going to get irritated from the other person's view. The bina, and we explain these concepts in bina, and but they also these three areas exist in das in focus. The what is the evidence, the sign? What is the evidence for deep focus? What is the evidence for deep focus? You see 
it's optics. You can see symptom. Symptom means a focus, making something smaller. The kibbutz. Kibbutz means uh, kibbutz in, is make it's um, got the English word when you when you tighten when you when you tighten up. Kliyameach, the vessel of the brain, because intellect is on, is actually is actually the brain is only a vessel for the intellect. So the, 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 you see them, the head, it sort of becomes smaller. Because he has a very deep connection to the concept. So you're going to see the marks and the eyebrows and between the eyes become smaller. And actually, if you do it a lot, then it starts to become marked on your face. And you can actually see if a person has a lot of space in between the eyebrows, they have a, a usually they have a natural wider vision on things. And however, as you can see on me that I spent a long time um, focusing on small things because it's the two lines are quite close together and so you're going to be able to see on a person's person's forehead when they're doing a das another thing which i notice is the moment that they're doing das they're going to freeze and they're not going to speak they're not going to say anything so you ask them a question they freeze they they pause for a second that's when they're doing the moment of das and then suddenly they start talking, they, they get the answer. In other words, it's, it's a tunnel, oh, it's a factory, but it's really a tunnel. So they go into the tunnel, they focus, Das gets turned on, suddenly they get to the place, they enter the tunnel with the answer, and they, they're able to articulate the answer afterwards, supply the answer when they start speaking. But when they start speaking, they're already not in Das anymore. So you see people move in and out of Das. In and out of Das, it becomes quite obvious when you look for it. Blush in Yiddish. Now the Mittler Rebbe uses Yiddish because sometimes Yiddish is a gives a clearer understanding to what exactly we're speaking about. So he says, "Er is drinen farnumen." He is extremely like busy or taken up. Farkvetsht. Farkvetsht in Yiddish is he's very folded, like. Stark, stark means strong. It's very it's strongly like folded in. Zayer very much. Bees as is Zayer mitzumtzum until he's very very um, squeezed. Rak betnuah achas only like one movement. The skira achas but there's only one thing he's doing. He's basically frozen. Skira achas means like. Uh, uh, it's like he, he's literally frozen. Like you take a snapshot, the person becomes frozen for that second when he's in das. And then he explains from this activity of activating the das comes the deep understanding through the previous deep learning that he did through comprehension. Because comprehension, comprehension and contrast and comparison is the opposite of being squeezed. Vakibutz and, and um, being kibbutz, being focused and uh, the opposite of ex expansion. Sharia iun de bina, because the the deep learning of the mind of comprehension of the left brain, Gamsha Ahmed. Even if you stand, um akev betzimtzum. Even if you hold yourself back, betzimtzum in uh, in microscopic focus, the kivutz and betchilase. Even if at the beginning you you are you give you have this microscopic focus, avol miyad mispashet. Immediately, immediately you leave the tunnel and it becomes wide. It becomes it becomes extremely wide. 
uh, all the different parts start to come up in the brain, in the left brain, and you start differentiating between one idea and the other idea and the, the various parts, you can almost like make a brain dump. You can make a, a um, you just start writing everything that comes into your mind. And then you start organizing it. Can you do it like it's known? On the other hand, this is not the case when a person is becoming the does the opposite of expansion. When a person use, uses deep focus, deep attention, other abba. On the on the contrary, it's the opposite of, of the comprehensive brain. What's happening is you have to use all the powers of the brain and put it only on one place. So basically, the mind of focus, you take all the powers of the brain, you take, you turn off everything else. And you only focus with all the powers of your brain, to connect only to the concept which is at hand. Which that is the exact opposite of spreading the idea out from, from deep learning. Widening the concept. Widening the concept. Writing down anything that comes up in your mind. Um, and, and then organizing it, that is deep learning. But, but, but uh, what we're speaking about today, focus is the opposite. In Yiddish, klep means uh, gluing, being, being, it's like Velcro. You, you, basically, you put your entire self into this little focus, very much so. Garm is like very much so. Hey, can, I, can I interrupt and ask a question, please? Yes, absolutely. So isn't this a little bit counterintuitive in the sense that he says, after the parentheses, the earlier parentheses with the Yiddish, he says, <laughs> So that you would think that going to the depth of something requires focus and and that's so so how is it that going to the depth of understanding of something the depth of comprehension of something is the opposite of the the super focus where you are so focused that you're contracted and ignoring everything else so we have we have to discuss that there's a difference between if you're if you're listening to a teacher and if you're a student. So if you're a teacher and you already have the core concept and you just need to retrieve something new. So you've, you're starting off with the flash. You're starting off with a flash of intuition, which is not concrete. And suddenly you're writing ideas down. But if you're a student, you don't start off with das, with a deep das. Maybe we need some attention. You need, you, you're using just like attention das, superficial attention, where you, you're, you're just being attentive to the, to the teacher, which, is, which is, requires a certain amount of das, but you don't need to freeze in order to be able to do it. You're not, you're not using your higher levels of das. And you're just taking information and you're dividing everything up and it's, you're widening everything as much as possible. You're taking notes, you, 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 you're, you're then later organizing everything. This, is, this experience, what you're trying to do is widen the concept as much as possible to make uh, different components and different parts and then divide those up into further components and further parts. And, this is, and then you start comparing. Comparing is very important. You compare this one to this one, this one to this one. What's the difference? What's the same? It's a discussion. It's a comparison. It's it's the opposite of das. But suddenly, when you are comparing and it requires a little more effort to figure out what is the core concept over here, 
then you need to switch and be quiet for a second and focus. And that's when the eyebrows go in because the, 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 because the das, the deep das is being turned on. And a moment later, you should be getting your answer. So that, does that, that answer the question? Oh, and then what happens is your answer, it comes, it comes as a, 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 a flash of, in, of insight. So the answer comes flash of insight and suddenly you realize, and then it's immediately from the flash of insight, it goes to the mind of comprehension. And now you realize you need to write everything down because you just, you just so many ideas just popped into your mind and they're expanding bigger and bigger. So you just, it's a dance. You're moving back and forth from Bina to Das. From insight, some insight, some, some, some expansion in Bina, trying to get to the core concept. As soon as you're getting to the core concept, you apply that super das, that deep uh, das, and you get another insight. So you always, it's, it's a dance. Is, is that, is that e easy to, is that, is that clear or better? So let me see if I'm understanding this. So you're saying this, we're, we're constantly in a, in a flux between all these different states of our... Yes. Okay. So going back to the words I was talking about, that it's through, one second. Um, it's like, you know, I always I used to ask my Rosh Hashimah, okay, how does what you just said fit in the actual text of the words? Right, the so, that's what I'm trying to understand, because let's let's leave aside the parenthetical comment for a second, so it's over here like this. It seems like, I mean, simen of simen laham kas adas who asher nirak inyan simtsum kibutz kliham mayach la itzim emek hiskashu say right. Shemized dafka ba etzim emek hasaga ayude iyun adabina. One second. Yes, first you do now. Now, through first you do iyun adabina, you get the emek hasaga, and then you focus. So he's describing everything backwards. Do the Iyun of Bina, which is expansion, to get to the core concept by contrast and comparison, then apply the um, the the deep focus in order to get to insight. That's how it fits into words. Okay, I'm, I'm gonna go Jimmy's over again. But... So, so even when you're doing the, the contrast and comparison, right, through the Iyun Abina, your mind finds it difficult to clarify what the core concept is without applying some focus. So you basically divided the idea, you widened an idea, and you said, oh, there's this one concept over here, and there is another concept over here. Then, oh, so what's the difference between them? That moment, you need to focus and be quiet. And oh, I know the difference between them. I know how they're the same. I know the difference, right? That moment was the moment of Das, and that allowed you to get to the Oymek Hasoga. That allowed you to get the core concept, which is the same, or the, or the, or the, or the nuance. Is the key component between both of the both the ideas that that you that you were analyzing. In other words, not only to the insight, you need to apply das. You need to apply some focus to clarify the core concept between two ideas, which you expanded in the beginning. So a bit, you do the iyun abina, the expansion. Then you need to apply the a little bit of focus. To clarify the the Oymek, uh, the Oymek, the depth, the Oymek Asaga. Uh, uh, then give even more focus and you get the insight. But usually that comes with a little bit of distraction. In other words, it requires even a deeper level of focus to be able to come to insight. So usually a person's distracted uh, and, and the deep subconscious focus is still working on the subject. To get to insight, but getting to 
but getting to the Oymek Asoga can happen through discussion and, and just stopping for a second. Is that is that better? I'm still processing it. I have to I have to go back. I have to go back in and, and look at it inside again because I'm I'm not I'm well yeah, I'm understanding what you're saying, but I'm not understanding the words. Why is he explaining it backwards, so to speak? Why is he explaining it? Oh, because he's space. He's he wants to he he wants to tell you what we're doing now first. And then he said, by the way, did do you remember what we were doing before? Uh -huh. How do we here? That's why he's doing it backwards. Do you remember what we were doing before? We were getting into Aymak Musak. Oh, be and before the Aymak Musak, what we were doing, Eon. So just 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 to remember what we were doing before. How do we get here? How do we get to Aymak Adas? How do we get here? By the way, do you remember how we got here? Yeah, it was Aymak Musak. Oh, was before Aymak Musak was Eon. So what do you need to do first, Eon? Add das to get to the Aymak Musak. Okay, I, I, I'm. I didn't, anyone else have questions? Because we're coming to the uh, end of the hour, and I want to give people to ask a chance to ask questions. There was one question, and I don't know if there's something else you wanted to accomplish today. Uh, I wanted to finish the. I want to finish the chapter. Oh, okay. so why, why don't we finish that and then we'll do the questions? Okay. Okay. So, so I would just want to bring down now. There's the lower das and the higher das. The lower das is emotional intelligence. In other words, how do we, va you basically you have to ask yourself, is this good or bad? Or ask yourself a question, how is this good or how is this bad? In what situation is it good, good for me? Is it not good for me? Is it good for others? These questions change an uh, uh, intellectual concept into a up from objective to subjective. What does this mean to me? And that gives birth to emotion because we're designed to either like good things and this like bad things. So basically triggering emotion. So how do you trigger emotion from an intellect, uh, intellectual concept? So ask the question, is this type? Is it good or is it bad? Is it good for me? Or is it not good for me? Is it good for others? When, when is it good? When is it bad? And that sort of uh, questioning will bring to subjective emotion. And that's called the lower das, which is mainly the back of the brain. I'm not gonna go into details exactly, but that's a general idea. Now there's the higher das, which is more connected with the um, forehead where, the, where people put on tefillin. And that is using Das to go to a higher level intellectually. In other words, to go from Bina to Chachma, to go from understanding the core concept to the flash of, into, uh, of insight. That is the higher Das. And then to go from the higher Das, uh, to go from Chachma, from insight to the connection of truth, which is higher than intellect, to Kesa, which is that to the crown, that is also the higher Das. So the lower das has one function, go from intellect to emotion. And the, that's the lower das. And the higher das has two functions, to move from the left brain to the right brain, and then second function to move from the right brain to the crown, which is higher than the intellect. That's the higher das. The amnam, hamakas Now, Amnam is usually a however, like we had a question before that we had a we had a, some sort of tension before that that this is not Eun, this is not study, this is not subject matter, there's no subject matter. So it says Alidea Makasadas, however, even though it doesn't have that, it does it can't provide you with content. Das does not provide content. Bina does, but Alidea Makasadas, but through Focus through attention, through concentration, Bali De Amkus Hamuskal, you can get to the depth of the 
concept muscal. I mean, in other words, the way it's in the right brain, the way it's in in insight, insight. At shorshe be'umke achachma ubina until the source of the left brain and the source of the right brain. You can go very far if you have the right das. And that's why it's very important to protect the, oneself with what one puts attention on in order to have a clean das that's able to do these wonderful things to go higher. That's why people that experience these things, they become naturally become very, very uh, careful of what they expose themselves to because they may get other information, may cloud them from being able to climb. <laughs> so a person can come to the higher das, which we explained before, the, the mezaveg that makes chachmad labina. It connects the right brain to the left brain. I believe there's type of injuries that neurologists can tell you that 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 there's a split that the right brain and the left brain don't connect properly, and when you ask certain questions, that that, that becomes obvious. But the, what in a regular person, the right brain and left brain need to connect, and it's the higher das which allows to have that connection, either on a superficial level, which everybody does all the time, but on a deep level, that's where we want to go. Like we said above, regarding the depth of the comprehensive con the concept which you can comprehend, the bina of the left brain of comprehension, the hainu, the das ganus bepuma de ema. And there is a statement that in Aramaic that das is hidden on the mount of comprehension. In other words, there's no way you can do comprehension without focus. Even though they're opposites. But there's no way you can do comprehension without focus because first you have to establish the frame. No one is speaking about frame, framing things, two frames fighting with each other, right? So framing is the das, does the framing. So das on the entry Das is hidden on the entry of comprehension. You can't comprehend something if you, if you don't establish the frame with, of, of the discussion. It says Moshe was the embodiment of Das, of focus. Because he was the embodiment as a person of Das, he received the Torah, he spoke directly to to Hashem, Zachal Abina. That's why he merited to become the master of comprehension. Shul Sharanun. He eventually was able to get to the 50th gate of comprehension. We say there's 50 gates of comprehension. The 50th is the highest one. It's almost like imp it's impossible to be able to, to get to the 50th gate properly, completely while, while being alive. So he, he, he got to the 50th gate of comprehension because one is dependent on the other, the other, like it says in the holy writings, um, in a number of places, how these two opposite abilities of the mind, which we use one with the other, cannot function without each other. And this is what we've said till now, is enough for a person who understands there's enough subject matter a person that understands to be able to understand this better on their own. So that's 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 it. That's what he says. Hey, wonderful. Thank you for getting us through the first chapter with it's amazing. So I want to ask uh, if there's any questions. And I know that there was a question asked before. And uh, I'm going to pull it up over here. So uh, someone asked, who is the person in our generation with the Das Chazak, the strong Das? And then the person continued, they, they heard you saying what they wrote after was, okay, he said, we don't have one in our generation, question, answer. But I wanted to go back to that and help uh, flesh that out. Is the, Do we have people in this generation who have a Das Chazak? They would need to be a Rosh B'nai Stroll, a Moshe, he made a person that took over from him and that was Yeshua, and Yeshua in his generation had the Das Chazak. And uh, 
it's almost like this this power which is given to the to to like the the heads the leaders this the, the absolute leaders of the generation the shepherd of the generation the shepherd of the generation gets the supernatural power which which is das khada but nobody nobody else gets so he gave it to Yeshua, and in every generation is a list of these people till the end of the Talmud. Sometimes it's two, sometimes it's more than one. We have a list of everybody that had Das Chazak till the end of the Talmud, which is 40 generations. Now, after that, I don't have a list, but I heard the Rebbe say till the Rambam was 50 generations. And I'm sure if somebody does research, they could probably um, make the list till today. So, so whoever is the head of the Jewish people at the time is the das has das chazan, and maybe one, you know, one other person, maybe two other people. I don't know. Okay, great. So the follow-up question is: So did Solomon have das chazak? Yeah, he um, was one of the people. I believe yes. I believe he was one of the people. Okay. But, yes. but, uh, but, but uh, however, there's a whole story in the Gemara that temporarily the power was taken away from him. Because if you, even a person as does Chaza has to know that it's like, you know, the, as as to remind himself constantly that's a gift. Remind himself constantly that's a gift. You say. Yeah. So, so he went through what he went through. In order to teach us a lesson, this lesson that don't rely on your das chazak, don't rely that you're the widest, widest person in history. Right. Beautiful. Uh, question number two is: Is the third brain, or this brain behind the forehead, the pineal gland? No, it's a, I, I, the pineal gland. I would think it's a more of a um, connected with the emotional brain, I think what we're speaking about is the prefrontal cortex. The prefrontal cortex right behind the twillin area. Okay. And the twillin is like an antenna which brings down the 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 Chochmah, Bina, and Das of Hashem because in the morning what we're supposed to say says, listen, you know, my das and my chokhm and bin are limited. Let me make, let me make space and your ideas and your concepts and your terror, let it, let me make space, my thoughts, let me put them aside and make space for your divine thoughts. Thoughts. I'm sort of giving myself over to you. And I'm just saying, you know, whatever I think, you know what, who says it's correct? I need, I need help that it should be correct. I'm giving my thoughts over to your ideas and the tefillin is an antenna that the, these, these, uh, the wisdom and the, 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 the three brains, and really the, the back brain is divided into two because you, you have two ways. When, you, when something's good or bad, there's good or bad, right? Go towards something that's good, go, to, go away from something that's bad. So that's why the tefillin has four parts. So the, the, the first part of tefillin represents is an antenna to bring the divine um, insight into the right brain. And the second one is to bring the divine comprehension into the left brain. And the next two are to bring the divine comprehension into the back brain, which have these two parts. Either you go towards something or away from something. It's emotional brain. It's the beginning of the emotional brain. So that's why the tefillin has four parts. Okay, wonderful. Third uh, question number three: How do how do we know Moses got to the fiftieth gate? I believe if you um, go into Sparia and type um, Moshe Shar Hanun, Moshe the fiftieth gate, all those sources will come up. It could be Zayar, I, but if, if you also, if, you, if I look at the footnotes, I don't have the volume. There's another, there's another more recent uh, printing of this. And they have footnotes. So, but that's, but I, 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 
And that's what they did as well. So I can look in the footnotes or you can make a search and you'll probably find out the sources. Um, was was it mentioned? Was we mentioned over here? One second. Moshe Shehuda Zachal Abina Shehushar and Hanun. So it says footnote number seven over here. We were. Let me share the screen again. Um, the mastery of Bina. The mastery. The master of comprehension through his focus. Moshe Zachal Abina Ra Rosh Hashanah Chof Aleph. So referring us to the Gemara. Here. Here in the bottom uh, footnote seven. Yeah, so it's a Gemara. There you are. It's also in a Sefer Maimarim. Tav Kuf Samach has the Alter Rebbe spoke about it then. So it's a Gemara, and the Alter Rebbe explained the Gemara. Okay, great. Great question. Um, any other questions? Here we see, note over here. Getting, thank you for those answering those questions. Thank you for asking the questions. We learn the most from the students. That's what the Mishnah says in Perke Aves in the Ethics of the Fathers. Right, and, and this is this what we've learned now is transferable to any study. So anybody can raise their their IQs quite a bit. Anybody can raise their emotional intelligence. Anybody can improve their attention. So how would you improve your attention? Uh, att attention. Attention. Uh, you need to get an enjoyment in the subject, to, to immerse yourself in the subject, to find a way to enjoy it, and then automatically the attention will become longer. You'll be able to keep attention for longer. But that you already have on the things that you enjoy anyways. So you can make yourself enjoy um, things that you haven't naturally enjoyed as of yet through hard work. Mm -hmm. So if you put some hard work, so you have to work with the areas we ha which you have full control of. And from them, you get control of the areas which you're not in control of, like your attention. Mm -hmm. So you act, you're, 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 you're having control of. So start with your actions. Do it, at least do the subject in a way that an enjoy, a person who enjoys it would do it. So that action brings down the energy, that brings down the enjoyment, and and then suddenly you're able to suddenly able to have a longer attention span. So do something in a way that a person who enjoys it would do it, and that action will bring down the spiritual powers. Okay, beautiful. Uh, let's just talk a little bit about the time, meaning yeah. today that we're coming up to uh, this this uh, Shabbos. We're concluding the book of Exodus and the Torah reading in Shul. It's going to be Shabbos of Orchim, which is the last Shabbos of the month of Adar. And we're going to bless the month of Nisan, which is the month that Passover falls in. And then we're only going to have actually one more class before Passover because Passover is going to be in two weeks um, after this, in, in, in basically two weeks' time. And uh, so we're going to have one more class before then. Um, so what? let's talk a little about Passover and preparing for Passover, what the month of Nisan is. So really the month of Nisan is the time, the, the Rebbe explains that the month of Nisan has some of the same words for a nace for a miracle, and it's a time of great miracles. It says that the Jewish people are going to be redeemed, and the whole world is going to be redeemed in the month of Nisan because it's the Chaydish, the month of redemption that God took the Jewish people out of Egypt in the month of Nisan. And we see that the, the really the fundamental purpose of taking the Jews out of the land of Egypt is that the Egyptians should learn that there's a God in the world, that the whole necessity of the process of the plagues and taking the Jewish people out of Egypt was so that they should, the nation should should learn. And, and that's why it's very interesting. We learned in last week's Parsha that when God was disappointed with the course of conduct of the Jewish people with the golden calf, like you were referring to earlier, Rabbi Chirik, Moses' argument 
the most persuasive argument he could come up with was, wait, one second, how's that going to look? The whole world is watching. They, they've, they've now been persuaded that you are the great God almighty that, that really runs the world. You don't, you don't want to, you can't just eliminate the Jewish people. That would, that would undermine your whole purpose in, in, in everything you've done so far. So we see that the, the real focus that Moses was, was reminding God almighty one second, okay, the Jewish people, got distracted, the, the weak das led to a in temporary inability to stand up for what was right. But don't, don't let's not, let's not get off track over here and get worked up on that point because then we're gonna undermine the real essential purpose of all of this. So give the Jewish people another chance. And that's what, that was the incredible work of Moses as an example for all of us that our job is to intercede with God and say, okay, you, you have a point over here, but let's not lose sight of the big picture which is that these temporary lapses should be overlooked by you, God Almighty, in your great mercy. And let's focus on the big picture over here. Let's get everyone back on track to the real ultimate redemption of the entire world. Wow. You have, have we something you want to add, Rabbi Chirk? I just say that the first blessing, three times a day, we ask, we pray, and we ask for our personal needs. And the first blessing in which we ask for our personal needs, we ask for Chachma bin and Das. And in other words, if we don't get the gift, like a minimal gift of Chachma bin and Das, we're not able to develop it further. So it's a, it's a gift. The original is, so the, the truth is, we can't take credit for anything good that we do. It's a gift also, because I came to a certain conclusion that I used my Chachma Bin Adas, but who gave me the Chachma Bin Adas in the first place? Okay, I developed it. Who gave me the who gave me the mound that I could develop it? I mean, a sheep is not able to, 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 to go up levels and to go from Bina to Chachma is not able to do that. He just wasn't given the, the those 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 basic abilities. So if I don't have the the opportunity to use my chachma and bin adas freely, I can't grow as a human right. being. So that's a gift. We ask for that gift. So perhaps we can say that um, that the the experience of of leaving Egypt is all about the world getting the right das. The Egyptians should need to have the right das. And what is God? And, and and the Jews need to not get carried away with a light das and start focusing on the wrong thing. So everybody needs to have the right das. Mm -hmm. So it could be, it depends where you're starting from. Naturally, it was expected that, that the Jewish people need to develop the das that they were given and take take it to, to, to a new level. But even the, the rest of the world, they yeah. it's important we care about their das yeah. as well. It's important that they get to 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 their their potential in das. Wow, beautiful, beautiful. Any questions? And uh, otherwise, we'll conclude for the evening. Okay. Well, everyone should have a good Shabbos, a uh, a blessed month, and we'll reconvene next week. Next week, we're going to learn about application. So this is all very nice, but it could be all theoretical. And that's not good enough. We have to go and do a thing called Tabuna, and Tabuna is application. There's one thing being a, an expert on a subject or, or have a lot of experience in a certain subject, but if it's not practical experience or, we, or our understanding doesn't bring to something practical, so it's not so useful. So, how do we take these skills that we've developed now and make them useful? With, 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 it's not Bina, it's called Tabuna, application. So that's what we're going to start learning about next week. So we're going to repeat what we learned and we're going to take it to the next level. Amazing. Beautiful. Thank you, Rabbi Chirik. This was the hardest chapter, by the way. Okay. That's a good sign because it's definitely hard, but you helped us get through it. Okay. Good Shabbos. Shabbos. Bye now. Thank you, everybody.